Social media has supercharged conflicts between teenagers, causing online disputes to spill over into real-world violence. Experts are concerned about the trend, warning generations of children are growing up without social skills. Here's Isaac Naruzi. One morning last September, in the early hours, police were called to a Canberra skate park after reports of a stabbing. They found two young men with serious injuries. One, an 18-year-old, died at the scene. At least a dozen teenagers were involved in the brawl, and it all started online. Increasingly what we're seeing is that groups of people, including teens, are meeting online, through social media or on chats. A conflict might arise, it escalates very quickly because it's all via text. And then when face-to-face -face contact happens, um, that humanizing factor or that disinhibition um, effect that has allowed that escalation to happen online doesn't necessarily dissipate. So they're meeting face-to-face -face at a high level of tension. And um, you know, this is the worst case scenario in terms of what happened in Canberra. Certainly a growing um, policing concern that we're looking at now um, is something that has uh, certainly escalated over the last five years. Schoolyard bullying that continues at home through devices isn't a new problem. A quick search brings up thousands of videos of young people fighting, and once online, they're there forever. No concern about how quickly it escalates and how quickly um, it gets out of control. But authorities are now facing an even tougher challenge. As technology changes, so does the way we interact. And there are serious concerns that generations of children are growing up without the ability to interact face to face. You're not picking up verbal cues, physical cues and body language. And young people don't realise just how dangerous that is. Young people don't know a world without the internet and they don't make a distinction between the online and offline worlds. In fact, if you gave them the choice, they would probably conduct all of their interpersonal relationships um, online or over the phone. Child psychologist Brianna Thomas says while that's concerning, it's not surprising. Social media is designed to be addictive and young people are vulnerable prey. Young people's frontal lobes aren't developed until they're in their mid-twenties and um, um, they can be very impulsive when they can act on something that they feel really strongly about. Martin Fisk runs Menslink, a support service for young men. He's seen firsthand how quickly anger can escalate. Somebody's disrespected me online, I'm going to take revenge and I'm going to take revenge physically because I can find where they live, I can find where they go to school. The problem is that by the time people end up at places like Men's Link, conflict has already spilled over and the damage is already done. Then the challenge is to pick up the emotional pieces. To prevent this, the goal is now to help young people start seeing the world through their eyes rather than their screens. We need to really work with all of our young people, but particularly the young guys, to show them that human, human interactions are worthwhile, that they're valuable, that online connections aren't the same. Education campaigns by bodies like the eSafety Commissioner can help, but they're not always effective. And they don't have much faith in social media companies to help solve the problem. They say it's time for parents to really step up. You know what your children are doing online. You know, be uh, persistent because I know, uh, you know, certainly my children are, are um, worried about their own privacy. But you need to be persistent, you need to know what they're doing, who they're talking to. Kids need balance, they need direction, they need limitations. And we need to start this young because by the time they get into the teenage years and they're striving for independence, it's very difficult to ratchet this time online back if we haven't set those limitations early. Experts say the solution can be as simple as switching off the phone to cool down when things get tense. But that's a huge challenge in an age when social media has become so ingrained in all aspects of our lives.